Hello guys, I mentioned my auto rate setup yesterday on RC Groups and someone wanted to know how I came up with it and how it works. So let's get into it. I use the B switch for my rate switch. So I have three rates generally, low, high, and 3D usually. But in the case of auto rates, one day I was thinking about this and I thought you know if you take off in low rates and you fly around and you decide you want to do a spin or a snap roll especially a spin if you're going to do a spin you throttle back and you let the airplane fly straight and level until it slows down enough to stall and do a spin and at the moment you feed the rotor in if I were to use the analog switch on the rudder stick to increase the elevator and aileron throw, the plane would spin better than it would in low rates. In fact, in low rates, a plane generally won't spin unless it's pretty unstable. So in low rates, which I'm in right now, if I move the rudder back and forth, I get 75% throw. And if I pull the right stick into the corner, I get 50% on aileron and elevator. And when I move the rudder back and forth, they stay at 50%. Nothing changes. I'm in low rates no matter what the sticks are doing. Now, if I go to the middle position to switch B, which is auto rates, and I hold the right stick in the corner, I'll just show you what happens when I move the rudder stick past 85 or 90%. I've always used 85%, but 90 will probably work too. Um, so let's see. I'm going to move this rudder stick to the left. And as it hits that 90% point, not necessarily in the output throw, but physically, see the aileron and elevator jump to 100%. And when I let go of the rudder, then they come back to low rates. And if I move the rudder to the right at 85 or 90%, the aileron and elevator go to 100% throw. So what this lets me do is fly around with the B switch in the middle position. As long as I don't peg the rudder, I'm in low rates. But as soon as I peg the rudder, then I get extra elevator and aileron throw. And then if I want 3D rates all the time, then I flip the B switch to the up position and now the rudder gives me 125% as do the elevator ailerons. So this makes it to where I just flip the switch one time. Usually I use a, an idle up. So I don't switch the right switch to the middle position until I'm in the air if I use idle up on it. But without idle up, you could take off with the switch in the middle. But generally, I take off in low rates, and when I'm in the air, then I switch to the middle position, auto rates, and just continue flying. And when I want to do a spin, I just throttle back, and when the plane stalls, I feed in full rudder and full up elevator and do a spin or whatever. And when I let go, I'm back to low rates, and I can make the whole flight without flipping the switch between low and auto rates. If I want 3D rates, then yeah, I have to flip it. So anyway, let's see how I did this. So I started doing this several years ago and I probably had a DX-18 then. So I used flight modes to do it. And ordinarily I reserve the flight modes for the flaps, but for an aerobatic plane like a laser, extra edge jack, sukhoi, whatever. They don't have flaps. So we're not giving up anything if we do use the flight modes. And you can do the flight modes on a DX6E or a DX9, DX8, DX18, whatever. All of them pretty much will do this because you got to have a transmitter that will do at least two switches. So I put the rate switch as switch one and the rudder stick analog switch on the rudder stick on switch two. And then in low rates, 
As I move the rudder back and forth, it's in flight mode one, which is low rates. And when I put the switch to the middle, it's still in low rates. And when I move the rudder, it switches to FM2, which is high rates. And then when I go to the third position, which is 3D rates, now when I move the rudder, it's always FM3. Now, originally, when I set this up, I set this one here as FM2, and these three were FM3, but then this one was FM4, and this one was FM5. And that lets you have a little bit different setup in the middle position than in low rates if you wanted it. Um, so anyway, uh, DXs can do five flight modes, but if you only use three, if you do one, two, and three, then it's only going to use three. And of course, on this transmitter, I renamed FM3 to 3D rates. And of course, switch B is what's making the audio announcement because I don't want the transmitter to tell me every time it switches between FM1 and FM2 when I'm moving the rudder back and forth. So, and then low rates. Now, to make the setup a little easier, you can set this one to FM2 so that you don't have to hold the stick against the stop to set FM2 up or four and five if you use them. So I'll temporarily set this to two so that the rudder doesn't make any difference. You got FM1 in position zero and you got FM2 no matter where the rudder is and then here. So when you go to the dual rates, let's see. See now when you flip the switch, you don't have to move the rudder back and forth to get it to switch to position two. And maybe I should have shown you that first. We'll go back into flight modes and put it back like it needs to be to fly. We'll put the switch back in the middle and we'll change this back to one and then come back out and then we'll go into dual rates. Okay, so now I'm in low rates and as I move the rudder back and forth, nothing happens here. And when I go to the middle position, we're still in low rates, but as I move the rudder, you see it switches to flight mode two. And then when I go to 3D rates, it goes to flight mode three. So, you know, on this transmitter, it's not so hard. I can hold the stick here and click on this and move these and click OK and then let go of the stick and it's back to flight mode one. But, you know, it might be easier if you temporarily set the flight modes like I showed you a minute ago. And another thing about this setup, and um, normally I have always set my servo travels to 100%, but we recently learned that the Spectrum AS3X safe receivers, they, the transmitter, when you do forward programming, the transmitter tells the receiver about this 125% throw. And, and in the past, I would leave the servo travel set to 100%, but in dual rates, I would set this to 125. Well, the AS3X safe receiver doesn't really get this information. Um, so it's best to increase the rates or the increase the servo travel to 125 and not the rates. So it's kind of changed my game plan. So don't put the dual rates above 100% and set the servo travel to 125. And the reason for 125, that gives you some overrun room for trim. See, it uses, you got a little bit of distance here, 25% left for trim. Basically, 
minus 100 to plus 100 is 1500 microseconds plus or minus 400 microseconds. In other words, 1100 to 1900. But 125 gives you 1000 to 2000, 1500 plus or minus 500, which that was the original standard was one millisecond to two milliseconds. 1000 microseconds is one millisecond. 2000 microseconds is two milliseconds. So generally what I've found is that with 100% travel, the servo moves 40 degrees each side of center. And with 125, it moves 45 degrees either side of center. So to get 45 degrees of control surface throw, the servo arm needs to be the same length as a control horn on the rudder or the ailerons, whichever surface. So you get one to one. So if the servo moves 45, the control surface moves 45. So it takes 125% to get that 45 degrees of movement. You only, you're only going to get like 40 degrees with 100. Now, the other reason why I've used 100 for that is because I don't like setting the dual rates below 40 or 50% really. I really don't like to go to 50% because what that does, it cuts your servo travel in half. You only get 20 degrees either side of center. And that decreases the resolution of your radio. Um, it decreases the positioning accuracy of the control surface because when the servo doesn't move as far as it could move, then the slack is a bigger percentage of the travel. And your control surfaces will be, they won't be as tight. With the IX-14, there's another way to make this work. You don't have to use flight modes. You can use the logical switch. So you select the logical switch, switch one. And now when I'm in low rates, I see I've got switch B for switch one and the rudder analog switch for switch two. And I've named this switch auto rates. So with this rate switch in position zero, which is low rates, and I move the rudder, it stays in uh, zero. And when I go to the middle, it moves to the middle row, but with the rudder not pegged, it's still in the same zero uh, mode. And when I peg the rudder stick, it goes to one. And then when I go to 3D rates, now it's in two. So zero is low rates and one is high rates and two is 3D rates. Now you can make this center position a one and you can make these a two and make these three a three. And you can adjust this rate independent of your low rates if you wanted to. But really, I don't like for the airplane to change what it's doing. When I go from, when I go from low rates to auto rates, I don't want the airplane to change the way it flies, except when I peg the rudder stick. This is the simplest way. You have basically three different rates. And if you're using flight modes, it's three different flight modes. So say so you've got one, two, three flight modes. And you can have up to five. I assign, I move the rudder stick and I assign the flight mode to wherever the blue square is. And then I name the flight mode so that when I go to my main screen, to the dashboard, well, actually here you see it. I'm in low rates and when I go to the middle position, it still says, it still says low rates, but when I peg the rudder, it goes to high rates. And I don't, I don't want it to tell me that it does that because I know it's going to do it. And in 3D rates, it shows 3D rates, no matter where the rudder's at. Here you see that the switch for the dual rates is the flight modes. And you can change this to 
the auto rate's logical switch. And when it's in low rates, of course, the switch is named auto rates, but when it's in low rates, it's in zero, no matter what I do with the rudder. And when I go to the middle position, it says auto rates, and with the rudder not pegged, it's still in uh, the first flight mode. And as I peg the rudder, it moves to the one position, and the rates go up to 80% on the aileron and then when I go to 3D rates it says 3D rates and now it's in the third position which gives you 100% dual rates and as you move the rudder nothing changes it stays in 100% so that's using logical switch and this is using the flight modes it works the same way. Low rates, you move the rudder, nothing changes, stays in low rates. You go to the go to the middle, move the stick at the extremes, it changes to high rates. And then flip the switch one more time and it's in 3D rates. And as I move the rudder, it stays in 3D rates. So it doesn't matter whether you use flight modes or set up a logical switch, call it auto rates. They work the same way. This is a, a template I made that I can uh, create a m new model off of and then modify it for that particular plane. And everything's already set up. So if you want 3D rates, Set the travel to 125% for the control surfaces. Set your high dual rate to 100. And um, that way you won't overdrive the servos. Go back here to dual rates. See in your 3D rates you've got 100%. So don't go above 100% if you've got the travel set to 125 you don't want to do 125 in both of them. So, and using 100% on dual rates, if you had a receiver with uh, safe mode in it, then the bank angle limits and the pitch limits would be correct if, if 100% is here in safe mode. Of course, if you're in low rates, you're only going to get 40% of the bank angle if it's set to 40 and you're gonna get 80% when the rudder's pegged. So I always set up my receiver flight modes on the rate switch so that when I go to safe mode, the rates are automatically 100%. And there's lots of ways to do that. But this video is supposed to be mainly about auto rates so that you uh, don't have to flip the flight mode switch every time you want more throw you just peg the rudder and the elevator and aileron automatically have more throw so anyway hope that was helpful and uh, we'll see y'all later thanks for watching